Welcome to Study Chess with me. And we're back to another really promising tactics session. Uh, I am already facing the first position. I have had a very brief look at it. It looks like it's going to be a very simple solution to start with. Um, so feel free to pause it. And hey, let's get to work. So it says, why to move and win? Difficulty 1744 to find this particular move. And yeah, I don't think so. This, as far as I can tell, is just a mate. So let's just get to it. Well, no surprises. Next position. And well, Experience says that this will be the last really easy one. And after that, they're going to start throwing us haymakers. So white to move and win. Easy, 1598. And yeah. Okay, next position. And you'll be noticing that it's not really giving us any ELO for these. Solutions and aha, the first challenge. 2175, black to move and win, tough. Okay, I think I found a solution. And yeah, it wasn't my first move. But um, it does help to know that there is a tactical shot. You just never know because I've had solutions where I thought Maybe my solution was insufficient, and therefore I was missing a move. And it turned out I wasn't missing a move. The engine just thought it was plus four, and I didn't quite see it that way. In any case, I'll give you my first initial probably wrong solution, and then what I believe is the correct one, which is actually a lot easier. So my first initial solution was knight takes e5, rook takes e5, Queen c6, threatening, of course, mate on h1. And yeah, I didn't see a lot of defenses um, against queen h1, so I thought rook e4. And then my idea was simply queen takes e4, pawn takes e4, rook takes d1, uh, taking advantage of the pin. Rook takes d1, bishop takes e4, and yeah, we've gotten back a pawn, but I just don't see how this would be winning. The thing is, is that yes, we do win a pawn, but in this position, white started with six pawns and black with five. So getting back a pawn is not exactly that big a deal. In the end, though, I think the solution is a lot simpler. I think the correct move, and let's go back, is in fact queen d4. Threatening simply knight takes e5, and threatening to take on f2 mate. Queen takes f2 mate. And I don't actually see any defense against this. If you play knight g4 to try to protect f2 and remove the knight from its attack, you have bishop f3, protected by the rook on f8. And yeah, looks like game over to me. Finally, if after... Queen d4, queen e2. It doesn't work because knight takes e5 and you have to choose. Taking back the, queen, uh, the knight with uh, queen takes e5 allows queen takes f2 mate. So A lot of talk for a simple solution, but I am sorry. <laughs> uh, Next position, 1919, black to move and win. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Okay, um, I have the solution. And if you would like to think about this position a bit more, don't hesitate to put the video on pause before I give you my solution. So, the solution is queen d2, uh, attacking the bishop on b2, and of course, threatening mate on g2. Uh, 
rook e2 seems to be the only reasonable move because I'm also attacking the rook on e1. So rook e2, and then we play rook f1 check. Knight takes f1. It's really the only move. Queen takes e2. And now there's really no defense against the multiple threats of g2, of taking on f1, and of course b2 as well. So game over. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So white to move and win, medium difficulty, 1850. And yeah, that's an understatement. So feel free to spend a little time thinking about this. Otherwise, it's bishop b7. And let's go on to the next one. 1960, white to move and win. Okay, I could be wrong here. I'm just trying to figure out why I can't take the pawn on b7, which is obviously the move that screams out to be played. There's obviously a threat, if you want to put it that way, of rook c7, but for me it's still a win for white. If there's a better move, then it hasn't leapt out to me. So I'll play queen takes b7, rook 8 c7, which is the most obvious reason why you wouldn't be able to play it. If the queen moves away, let's say back to b3, um, then you have rook takes c3, rook takes c3, rook takes a7. But you don't have to play it that way. If we go back, after queen takes b7, rook 8, c7, I play queen takes c6. Rook takes c6, rook takes c6, and I've gained a pawn and two rooks for my queen. And it looks, and of course I have a dominating position with those rooks, so yeah, it looks good to me. If there's a better move, we'll find out. Okay, well, it decided not to actually show these things, but um, yeah, obviously that's the reason. It's kind of funny that it will give you a position where you just take the pawn and it tells you which, you know, obviously you have to calculate why you can take the pawn or why you wouldn't be able to. And it just says, yep, that was it, solved. <laughs> okay. Next position. Ah, white to move and win. Tough. Ooh. Yeah, this is not tough. Especially because, okay, feel free to put it on pause, but honestly, it's got a setup that says there's either a very obvious solution or you're just dead because, I mean, black has a queen for the two pieces and pawns. So either you have an immediate and very effective solution that has no chance of counterplay, um, or yeah, there's nothing here. There are studies, you know, like domination studies by Kasparyan, which are wonderful. Um, you should look into those. But in any case, uh, this isn't one of them. So the solution here is bishop g4 check. If uh, queen, oh, sorry, if uh, king takes g4, then knight takes f6, uh, check wins the queen. And if king takes e4, then bishop f3, check, the king moves back to f5, bishop takes uh, d5, and game over. So yeah. 21, 26, yeah, not so much. Okay. 
Oh, he wants me to play this. Okay. Well, <laughs> I stopped my analysis after that because I figured there was nothing left. Um, the pawn on e3 isn't being threatened or anything, but okay. Next position. White to move and win 2077 difficulty. Is it now? Okay, I saw the move I'm going to propose almost immediately. I was just wondering if there wasn't come some kind of special trick, trap, or something that um, you know might provide a, an even better move. But yeah, I, I mean, I see it some other tactical ideas, but I just can't seem to make them work, and I don't see how these are worth the the effort. So I'm just going to go with a very simple knight e6 threatening the queen and threatening mate on g7 and winning the exchange. I don't see anything uh, cataclysmic for black here, so yeah, looks good enough. Lines I was examining were based on knight d5, but yeah, I just don't see how these are really worth it. A lot of time spent in <laughs> training. You know, in a real game, I would have played this probably very, very quickly. It's just that when you're given a position and you're told white to move or black to move, your tendency is to look for something a little more complex, particularly in view of the fact that it said 2077 difficulty. And I thought, it can't be so simple as 96, right? Not for that supposed difficulty. Well, I guess I was wrong. Next position, 1925, huh, black to move and win, interesting. And yeah, this is going to wrap up the uh, tactics session for today. No big master level difficulty positions apparently today, but I don't choose them, I just try to solve them. So once again, it seems really straightforward. Um, if you'd like to spend a little more time on this, feel free. Otherwise, I'm going to give my solution straight away. And it was kind of glaring, honestly. Um, rook takes g3 check. Pawn takes g3. Queen takes g3 check. I'm going to say king h1, unless you want to try to hand everything over with bishop g2. I don't see a lot of uh, a lot to gain there, but you can do it. And after king h1, f2, threatening queen g1, and it also has the added perk of pinning the knight on d5 with the bishop on b7, um, avoiding any kind of... Uh, Knight play shenanigans, and I really don't see how you defend it. Bishop g2, queen h4. Is there something else? I'm trying to see. But I'm just going to go with it. Okay, well... It was a fairly straightforward session. We can't expect them all to be ridiculously complicated and difficult. Not like Dvoretsky's endgame positions. Uh, we'll be facing those in a couple of days. And uh, yeah, well, thank you once again for joining me in this tactic session. I hope you were uh, able to solve uh, all of them. And if not, feel free to look over the solutions. And I hope you will join me tomorrow when I look at the next chapter in Ludwig Pachmann's Complete Chess Strategy. Until then, happy chess and good mates.